Welcome back to PyBatch YouTube. And this is another video about object-oriented programming. Uh, we spoke about classes, methods before. There are a lot of bytes about it. There's even a bytes learning path, which I will link. Um, but last video, we spoke about class methods. So automatically, the question becomes, OK, so you have regular methods, class methods, and static methods. So what are static methods? So welcome to this video. I will explain what they are, how they work. I will write one interact with one so you can see where they come in handy. And lastly, I will also show some exam some practical other examples from code bases. So let's dive straight in. Let's talk methods today, another OOP video. Last time I spoke about class methods. You can see the uh, an example below. I, uh, I coded a pretty similar one. It's in this video. Maybe you want to watch that first. But yeah, you have regular methods class methods, and static methods. And today, I want to talk about static methods. Honestly, I don't think we should talk a lot about them because I basically define them as basically plain functions grouped in a class. There's really not much more to it. They don't get the self passed in. They don't get the class passed in. They're just plain functions with arguments. And they happen to be grouped in a class. So I also asked why or how people use it on Twitter. Twitter is really great to ask. Uh, in spite of what people are saying, it's still really great to ask questions. I get a lot of good answers. Um, so I will highlight a few things. Regular functions in the context of a class. Guido said it was a mistake. Ooh, that's interesting. And here indeed is an email saying like, I actually wanted to do some Java class method. But once it was released, I found what was really needed was a class method. And in a sense, that's true, right? Like you can do a lot of this with class methods, uh, but it was too late. That's uh, that's interesting. Um, but I think it really comes down to the namespacing, grouping of things, um, how you want to define your interfaces. And that's what I'm going to show next. So namespace, I find it's helpful if the logic is truly tied to the class the business logic of the model. And that's kind of my only argument uh, for it. So let's look at an example. So here I have, and I try to keep this as simple as possible, not coming up with all kinds of business logic terms. Simple class, this is a regular method, and this is a static method. So right off the bat, what you will see is there's no self here. Oh, there's no self here. It's not working on the instance of the class. Uh, what we could do, is reference class attributes or methods. I don't think I ever seen this. So maybe a better example is to set here. To set a class variable and router access that. So maybe print that as well. And that's possible, right? You can access class attributes. What you cannot do is do a self name that would fail. Right, So it cannot operate on the instance. Uh, however, that's not very common. What you usually would do is some sort of helper here. So it might be a calculation, something that's not really needs to operate on the other objects in the class, but something that's independent. But we happen to group it in the class. So let me get rid of this for a second and just start with the other option, uh, which is to put a function outside of the class. So if class A, we have a regular method and we have a helper. So let's also create another module and do from static import A and helper. And I can call helper just as a regular function. I can make an instance of A and I can course called method, and I can also look what's in that object, right? So if you run this, uh, it prints one, that's the helper function. It prints hello, that's the method. It prints none. The hello is actually printed in method, but um, it doesn't return anything. So by default, this returns none. That's why you see a none there. And then I see with the dir built in, I see all the attributes on that object, that A object. So a lot of dunders, of course, but I also see method. I don't see helper in there. I only see method, my my um, my instance method. So one um, thing you can do 
I can bring helper into the class. Uh, but it's not going to operate on any anything, right? So again, if you would have name here, it's not going to touch this name attribute. It's not going to touch method. It's just a standalone function. It's not going to touch anything from the class. And it's just going to do um, some sort of calculation, right? Um, but this wouldn't work, right? Just to have a plain function here. So in that scenario, you do st static method. So now... Let's actually keep that the same to not confuse you. So now I can not run an import helper anymore that will fill. Right now it's like, where's, where's helper? I cannot import helper. <laughs> That's now gone, right? So we have a name spaced in the class. So now instead of importing helper, I need to go through A to really call it, right? So I can still do that first. So now you would actually already see that in the autocomplete. Um, helper now, so it has method, which is the um, instance method. It has name, which is that class attribute, PyBytes. And it also has helper now, which is the static method. And you don't call it with anything in this case. You could give it argument, right? So um, value one, value two. Then we could do um, value one plus value two. And then you would, of course, call it like uh, one, two. So this should print three and the rest then is uh, the same, but there's a difference uh, with dir now, which I will show. So effectively, this is the output of the static method. This is still the normal method. And here now, when I do dir, I have method, which is the instance method. I got name, which is that attribute I set, but I also have helper. So one nice thing of static method is that you can bring it into the class and now you have it kind of scoped um, in that namespace. So in your interface, if you do the dir, uh, you can now see that it's part of your API, so to say. And also you have that encapsulation, like I cannot import and call helper directly anymore. I have to go through the class. So a.helper and helper by itself cannot be used. So those are our two arguments um, you can make to use static methods. In practice, I don't use them very much. Um, but yeah, when you talk about namespacing, encapsulation, and design. Um, this could really be a nice OOP principle to follow. Also, try to come up with some practical examples in code bases. So here's a byte. And this class is called color. There's a constructor. It has a wrapper, a stir. Not much else, but it also has two static methods. And again, they're not operating on the instance. They're just doing a bunch of work as if they were functions, right? That's one. And the other, I have an article class, article searcher, constructor, a regular method, a call under, so that makes the class callable. And I have also static methods. Again, it's a regular function. It's not touching the instance and it's grouped in the class because it pertains to the class. This is kind of related to what the article searcher is doing in this context, um, making a table of the result. And the same with load feed, regular function. This could have been a function outside of the, the class as well. And that would just have worked. And then of course I need to call it like this. This would have worked, but in the sense, I wanted that to be part of Article Searcher's API, and I grouped it in the class. So I hope that clarifies what static methods are, how you can use it, and some of the advantages. Again, I wouldn't spend too much time on it, but it's good to know how they kind of compare to regular methods and class methods. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.